My name is Alison Graves and I'm from the English booth at the European Parliament. What I'd like to talk to you about today is education. Nowadays, when we look at the social agenda, the words that we hear are words like inclusiveness, equality, cohesion. So it might seem odd, therefore, that in the British education system, single-sex schools are becoming fashionable again. Now, why should this be the case? Well, I read some research recently that showed that there is, in fact, quite startling evidence in favour of single-sex teaching. It appears from this research that gender influences performance at school, or perhaps more specifically, it influences underperformance. It would appear that girls underperform in maths and science, which are traditionally typically male subjects, and boys underperform in languages, which are typically female subjects. Now, this research was backed up by a study. A school set up separate classes for boys and girls. Science and languages were taught separately to groups of boys and to groups of girls. In 1997, when the experiment was started, 68% of all pupils achieved what was deemed a good standard in exams that they took at the age of 16. In 2004, some seven years later, 81% of the boys and 82% of the girls achieved that same standard after a long period of separate teaching. So it would appear that it works very well. In interviews with the pupils, which were held during the experiment, many of them were also very positive about it. They said they felt more confident about participating in class they felt there were fewer distractions. They didn't feel the need to show off, as many of the boys said. So it would appear from that that separate teaching is a good idea. But does that mean we need to have separate schools? It's true that in the UK, single-sex schools often have excellent results. But is that because of the fact that they are single-sex? Are there perhaps some other factors? First of all, these schools do tend to be very well-established schools, very well-run schools. They have a good reputation. They attract better teachers. And I think we also need to look at the background of the parents. The parents who send their children to single-sex schools tend to be more middle-class. They tend to provide a good working environment for their sons and daughters things like breakfasts, early nights, and a quiet place to do homework. But perhaps at this point, I should declare an interest, because I myself went to a single sex school, obviously a girls' school. It did have very good results academically. We had excellent teachers, very good discipline. But what I disliked was the sense of social segregation, the fact that somehow we were not like the rest of society. And I felt that that made some of the values which were taught seem very old-fashioned. So for me, a good compromise would be to allow for separate teaching for some subjects, because that allows boys and girls to learn in supportive environments, allows them to have teaching which is tailored specifically to their needs, but that avoids that social segregation, which I disliked so much, and that sense of being so separate from the rest of society. Thank you.